Hello my soccer universe, the round of 16 of the 22 World Cup is in the books, we have a quarter final set and I guess the biggest question, uh, the biggest question for me is what was more remarkable that a major favorite in Spain was eliminated by Morocco or Portugal being actually absolutely amazing without Cristiano Ronaldo. I let you ponder this one and before that I actually want to make some uh, general statements about the round of 16. Every day we had, we had seven goals scored within the regulation. Every day. No matter how you, uh, how you tell, tell, tell it up, it, it went different ways like 3-1-2-1, 3-1-3-0, 1-1-4-1, 0-0-6-1. It was always seven goals, which also meant that now our average uh, goal ratio has uh, almost risen to 2.7, which is kind of the average that we expect, 2.69 at the moment. So, you know, the round of 16 has actually improved the average because we were just above 2.5. So that's actually quite something positive that I like to say. Also, I think we almost had a little bit of a crescendo in the wow. I think on the first day, uh, my main wow is wow, Argentina can look very shaky once they put a little bit on, on the pressure. Second day, we had a double wow. First, wow is this Mbappé guy absolutely outstanding and France look really good. But then, wow, if England turn it on and unleash their stars, they're actually really dangerous. Yesterday, wow, 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 wow. Brazil can dazzle us. Uh, is Brazil, did, uh, Brazil has put in the best performance of the entire tournament. And Portugal says, hold my beer. And I had a double vow today as well, because first of all, yes, I kind of saw it a little bit coming, but I didn't think that Fernando Santos will go through with it. Cristiano Ronaldo started on the bench. And wow, did Portugal look better. And even when he came on, he didn't score. And the guy that I've been screaming should be playing for Portugal all along. Namely, Rafa Leao, he comes on and gets his second goal. I mean, uh, he had two appearances in the World Cup, more or less. Uh, for uh, you know, I think he had more appearances, but he already scored two goals. So, uh, pretty amazing stuff there. And talk about Portugal very briefly. Uh, honestly, 6-1 against Switzerland. Yes, the Switzerland team has probably had a little bit of a virus going in and uh, out and so on and looked a little bit shaken. I think also the emotional toll that the Serbia game took had a part to play with it. But beating a rock-solid team like Switzerland, 6-1, to me is a more impressive result than Brazil winning one half against South Korea 4-0. I rate Switzerland higher than South Korea. This was an announcement. This was definitely an announcement and the announcement is no Cristiano, no problem. Absolutely no problem. Pro problem. Actually, exact opposite. No Cristiano, loads of party. That's really what it comes down to. As for Morocco and Spain, uh, it's a rather remarkable result that Morocco for the first time made it into the quarterfinals by just defending and figuring out that this Spain team doesn't have any punch going forward. It doesn't. And so Morocco, for the first time in the round of, uh, in the quarterfinals, that's a big one, first North African team to do so, given how North African teams are actually, uh, usually dominating the continent, especially Egypt. Uh, it's also kind of remarkable. It's a big, big story. And again, with a Moroccan coach, both of the t African teams that made it into the round of 16, plus Ghana, plus Cameroon, plus Tunisia, they all had African, they all had local coaches, which is huge for the continent and a much overlooked stat. And yeah, uh, <laughs> Spain even could score off penalties. But we'll talk about that uh, when we get to that point. Uh, today's stadiums were, of course, two that we will see again in the quarterfinal, but you know. I would say let's talk uh, Morocco, Spain, because we actually are kind of already in there as well. I honestly, I cannot tell you much of that game. Uh, yes, I was working while doing that, but most of the time I, I was looking, it was the same old pattern. It reminded me so much of what Spain did against Russia just four year, years ago. Pass, 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 pass. But no pass going vertically forward. It was all sideways. It was all sideways and... Morocco really being super organized, 
super deep and Amrabat are really putting in a performance of the ages uh, just working the Spain midfield against those three guys Morocco knew this is the game of, of their lives they had the crowd squarely on their side and I'm actually afraid that it might also result that there will be some um, fights in Spain because of this uh, given how many Moroccans are living there uh, but it was in a way an uh, impressive defensive performance by Morocco the few chances that Spain had they squandered almost um, so poorly uh, especially there was one in overtime where Morata runs onto goal and then kind of uh, does a, you know, pays a, plays a pass into Ansu Fati that doesn't even reach Ansu. Uh, then there was one before, I don't know whom, who, whom is, they more or less run on to go. There was no punch behind it. This was the, this is the boring Spain. That's the one that they, they, they did not. So the exciting Spain was the one that played against Costa Rica. The exciting Spain, to a degree, we also saw against Germany. But I don't know what happened between uh, the second half of Germany and the Japan game. It just fell sideways, and this is exactly what Spain... Uh, that's the problem that Luis Enrique will have. And I think I could see that Luis Enrique will eventually... Uh, either will step down or he will be relieved of his duties for Spain. Because um, it's pretty embarrassing with this super talented squad not making it, at least into the quarterfinals. That's a real embarrassment. I gotta say... Despite Morocco being good and despite, you know, Spain, everyone say, yeah, they went into the easier side of the bracket. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely not. You completely messed that up. And maybe some Germans would say, yeah, karma's a bitch because you, um, you kind of eliminated Germany by not playing full on. So now you got eliminated by Morocco. And it's also remarkable that the only group that is totally eliminated is the group E with Spain, Germany and Japan in there. Groups of death, group of deaths usually suffer that fate. I am worried a little bit of Morocco going forward uh, that they put so much energy in that they might not go for, uh, forward. I also have to talk about penalties. Um, I think this time the way the draw fell is was that the penalties were taken on kind of a mixed uh, setting. Uh, there were kind of some Spain fans, but also, of course, tons of Morocco fans. But you could see it when I, on the walk up when I saw uh, Sarabia, and especially Carlos Soler, moving up to the penalty spot. You could see how non-convinced they are. They looked. They didn't look necessarily they didn't look concentrated or they just look now yeah, do i really need, need to take this penalty that's exactly how they shot those pen uh those, those penalties and even when morocco gave them a lifeline uh when benun had his penalty saved busquets had his penalty saved, and there were three absolutely awful penalties i'm still waiting for a good penalty shooter that uh, this regard because the two that we saw so so far were just uh, horrendous because there was always one team that couldn't put them in. And as much as uh, Bono, Bono was making his moves, he, I guess he knew every Spanish player and knew about them. Well, that's a big difference. Let's go to something more impressive. I said Portugal against Switzerland. Super impressive performance. Cristiano Ronaldo not on the team sheet. Uh, I think it was a big decision to be made. It was the right decision to be made. Fernando Sanchez getting over himself and letting Portugal play offensively. And Gonzalo Ramos comes on for him. CR7, that is, and scores a hat-trick. And the first goal, I mean, the way João Felix uh, plays him, and Shea does not even think that Ramos is going to shoot from that uh, uh, angle. Uh, even uh, Jan Sommer was a little, a little surprised, but this was a rocket up into the near, up top near in the corner. Really beautiful, beautiful. Up until the points, so this Switzerland could actually keep the game rather open, but then it was just this one move, and that set it all off for Portugal. And from there, from that moment on, uh, they completely overwhelmed Switzerland, who I think at one nil at half they would still have been in the game, but as soon as the uh, Pepe makes it from Bruno Fernandes' corner. 2-0, no turning back.
there was no coming back and this is a Switzerland team that came back against France just two years ago uh, just no two years ago <laughs> a year and a half ago uh, but I didn't see this coming because Ramos puts it to bed right after half and then Guerrero just four minutes later makes it 4-0 Yes, a country pulls one back, and they, they, you know, they were, in the seven minutes, space there were three goals scored, but the game was squarely decided. And then uh, Gonzalo uh, Ramos again sent by Joao Felix, and the way he thinks it over, it was just so so cute. And it was especially because just Switzerland tried, yeah, let's go for it. Oka for come coming on, maybe he will strike now. He did not do anything. Um, I think Murad Yakin undid it with his tactics a little bit, uh, having a five at the back, which Switzerland is not used to playing. So that did not work for him. And Portugal, yeah, I think up front, they're almost as deep as England and Brazil. I still think that England is, has probably the biggest depth up front, oddly enough. Brazil second but Portugal is right there I mean what they can bring off the bench with uh, there's an uh, Orta there is of course Cristiano there is a Rafa Leao uh, they have a, a Neves in there that it, it is just super super impressive and a deep squad and you know uh, it also helped I mean the crowd and I found this so circus like yeah we never Cristiano 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 we don't need Cristiano you don't need you better off without him you really better off without him and I was so happy to see Rafa Leao can come on in stoppage time scored absolute screech screaming for goal Rafa Leao Schultz should be starting I understand with that front line and you know him liking to come on the left where Najwa Felic uh, is playing it might might be hard to get in over Najwa Felic Although I think he adds another dimension to it, to it, to it, to it. Um, Portugal looks scary this way. They absolutely look scary. Let's see how they will do against Morocco, who they will face next. If we see here the three, um, they are the second biggest favorite in the quarterfinal set, set, set up against, uh, against Morocco. I would say this will be a completely different game. Morocco again will keep it tight, but as I said, I have a feeling that this Morocco team will be tired and I think Portugal will just overwhelm them. And it also means that we have the prospect of a France-Portugal semi-final or an England-Portugal semi-final. France still slightly favored over England, although depending on which rating you look, England might actually win. I think this one is dead even. Um, in either case, it will be a very nice semi-final. Even if Morocco would make it through there as a story, sorry, but I think if Portugal makes it through, this will be a superstar meeting. Absolute superstar meeting uh, that we could look a lot forward to. And do you see we have Argentina-Portugal at the moment as a um, third place matchup projected. Could also be a final. We know who, who is playing for these two. Although one is putting, pulling his weight, the other one um, more of an hindrance at this very moment. So yeah, I think it will be a little bit more of a defensive struggle, but I think Portugal has everything it needs to play against Morocco and beat Morocco. I, I think it's safe to say that they are the big favorites there. Again, it's time to say goodbye to the eliminated teams. I want to start with Spain, who started out so brightly as one of the top favorites. After the first two match days, I actually said, you know, uh, Spain is among my the three favorites, uh, together with Brazil and France. Uh, as soon as they lost to Japan, and now that I've seen England, I actually already saw that my uh, opinion of Spain is waning, and the other one is definitely increasing. So there you go. Spain is out. Major, major disappointment for them. On the other side, Switzerland, I think, overall played a really good tournament. Yes, the loss, which is their biggest in his history, the lost once 5 0 to German, uh, Germany, surely will hurt. We have to see how far this Portugal team will uh, go to put this in, in perspective. Also, have, have in mind the lost early this year already 4 0 in Portugal. So, uh, Portugal has a little bit of number, although they could beat them in the return leg. Um, but go, coming out of this group again was exactly what was expected. And beating Serbia Sir, Sir, again was a tight match over, overall, but the way Switzerland uh, go, they showed their solid team. Totally re re reliable, but you also can rely on them not making it into the quarterfinals. 
So, there you go. Goodbye, Spain, and goodbye, Switzerland. Well, and with that, here you go. We have the quarterfinal lineup, the last eight teams that are left. One of these nations will become the new world champions. I think it's a quite eclectic lineup. Um, and I think it's really, really now the most interesting. Who are the favorites? I mean, if you followed my, you know, Brazil, 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 Brazil are still the big favorites. Now it's slightly Argentina ahead of France, but you know, you see them winning. It's quite level overall. It's just that Argentina has a better chance to move into the semifinal, which I think is what uh, have, what helps them. How France has then a bigger chance to make it into the final because Argentina will play Brazil. Most likely Portugal up in fourth spot right now with England fifth. It's among those five. I don't see the Netherlands, Croatia, or Morocco doing it as much as I would like the, like the Dutch to do it. Although, you know, I, you know, Argentina, Netherlands, one of those two nations. I would like to win. It's just really, really hard to see that this is gonna happen. And with that, we have the lineup for the quarterfinal. Egg actually is very well done. And inadvertently that we have the two more key games always the late game and the two games where there is a clear favorite uh, is the early game so uh, we start out with Croatia against Brazil will we see an early upset we remind a bit of 2010 where the Netherlands against Brazil was also the first um, quarter final and then the Netherlands pulled, pulled a huge upset over Brazil uh, Netherlands play against Argentina a very replay of the 78 final Morocco against Portugal probably the least heralded of the old lineups but that's a local derby and England France meeting for the first time in the knockout stage of the World Cup England has met France twice already in a world cup always winning by two goals i think in 66 they beat them 2-0 in 82 in a group stage 3-1 however there's also recent at the euros this was a completely different story a very interesting lineup i gotta say i'm especially looking forward to the evening games don't discount croatia and you know whether Brazil and Portugal can do something very, very much in, 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 in interest. But it's really, really building to me. England, France is the standout tie in here. So that was it from me. I will take with Rebus a little bit of a break because we have now two days break. But I will do some World Cup content, uh, probably uh, reacting on jersey matchups a little bit. Because that is something I had to neglect with the frantic schedule that we had. In any case, please let me know what you thought about the round of 16. If you had any interesting observations, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.